Greetings and welcome to the first part of a three-part series of Exploring Active Classroom. So in this first video, we are going to be focused on finding activities. And so with that being said, we're going to look for how to search by a topic or a keyword. We're going to look at how to search by your state standards. Um, we're also going to look at how to sort things by Lexile and also look at some of the different activity types without really going too deep into the actual activities themselves. This is more of a tutorial on how to find exactly what you're looking for in Active Classroom. So let's get started. Uh, the first time you log in, uh, whether your district set you guys up with rostering and single sign-on, meaning that your students can just click on it, it would take them right into it without having to log in uh, through Clever or ClassLink or log in with Google. Uh, we have a lot of different options to help you guys that way, but the first time you get in, you may look at this and say, wow, great, where do I start with this? You will see there's a great um, getting started video right on the homepage. I recommend checking that out. It'll probably reiterate a lot of the things that I'm gonna share with you guys today. There's also a question mark at the top right hand side of the screen here. You will see a little question mark. I don't know if you can see it highlighting up there next to the little, uh, my picture and the little message. Yeah, I've got 105 messages I've got to clear out. Um, but over here, you see the little question mark right here that takes you to a, um, a place with a ton of uh, tutorials, uh, users guides, um, instructions on how to embed links into Schoology, it's learning or Canvas, um, a lot of different things like that. So those are take you to some, some basics as well as some more advanced types of things. All right, so you get this and you're like, oh man, this is awesome, Active Classroom, I wanna get started right away. Uh, some of you may have access to a curriculum map. These curriculum maps right here, and I just happen to be in a uh, Texas account right now. And so you can see this is a curriculum map that was written for a certain district. And um, we custom these curriculum maps based on district requests. And with that being said, what I mean by that is, you know, a district will pay to have us actually take your curriculum, take the state standards, and then organize it and attach uh, or correlate it with different activities that we have in Active Classroom to leave to lay it out in a very nice, you know, week by week or unit by unit or even day by day type of situation. This just makes it a little bit easier to follow along with, but this doesn't prohibit you from really having access to the full capacity of Active Classroom because there's really so much in here, over 4,000 different activities that you can pull from. So you'll see the way that this one's arranged. It has the units on the left-hand side over here. We have the standards. And then underneath that, you'll see this one just happens to be listed uh, week by week and even day by day. It does, it gives them some, um, it gives them the name of the activity, the standards that are being covered right there, and then some teaching notes as well. So we really customize these. Again, um, even if your district did not get this for you, there, I'm gonna show you a lot of easy ways to really find activities to use with your students right away. Um, so if you did get a curriculum app, then maybe start there because it's a good chance that your district may have paid for that for a reason because they wanted you guys to follow that. So that's a good starting point if you guys have those curriculum maps when you log in. Some of you may open it and only see psychology and sociology. That would mean that your district did not get those curriculum maps or maybe they're under construction being built for you to launch at a later date. So check with your social studies supervisor to find out more info on that. All right, so now we are back on the homepage and I'm going to tell, take you to find activities. So if you click on the little magnifying glass over here, you see it kind of light up blue over on the left-hand side, bluish green. I'm gonna click on that button and it's gonna take me to a place where I can do some searching. All right, so right here, I can search by a topic or a person or a keyword. So I'm gonna search by Thomas Paine. And we're gonna look for, you know, he. I know he shows up in the, um, the standards in a lot of different places. So let's take a look at Thomas Paine. I pulled I typed in his name and it pulled up a list of activities right here. And you can see, I've got about two pages worth of activities and I happen to know because I did this one earlier and there are 24 activities on Thomas Paine. But I do want you to notice that over on the left-hand side, you will see these little icons over here. 
pay attention to those. We're going to talk about those in a little bit more depth. It tells you what kind of activity it is. And then there is a grouping of words. This one says acting history plays. Then there's a colon. And then it has the title of this lesson. So let me explain something because people may, when you first log in and you look at this, I've had teachers look at this and say, oh, active classroom is nothing but plays because they see the first page. And yes, the first 18 or so activities are all plays. That's because the way Active Classroom is organized, it is alphabetical by series title. The words acting history plays, which are the words before the colon, indicate the series, aka collection. So it's actually a collection of activities. You will notice that the acting history plays the Alamo, is very different from acting history plays the Berlin Wall. So very, very different topics, but it's a series, meaning a collection of similar activities with different content in them. That's going to be really important later for you guys to understand that, especially when I show you some different searching techniques. So the little icon indicates the type of activity. The grouping of words before the colon indicates the series, and then the words after the colon indicate the topic or the content that is being covered in that lesson. All right, so now we've looked how to search by keywords. So let's just do a quick Rockefeller search now. And so when I type in the words, rock, or when I type in the name Rockefeller, I'm able to pull up a bunch of different activities relating to J.D. Rockefeller. So um, that is a, just another example. I just wanted to reiterate how to do that. So if I want to clear out my search, the way you clear out your search, if you look on the right-hand side next to the advanced button, there is a little three-quarters of a circle with an arrow at the end. If you click on that, it clears out your search and takes you back to starting page. If you are finding that you are getting zero results, I would recommend refreshing your search. So clearing that all out and starting over. Um, or finding a keyword to narrow it down. But let's say you just want to look at your state standards. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm in the Texas standards here. So now I'm going to look at 11th grade state content standards, and I'm going to hit update. All right, so it takes me to, notice it has the brand new standards for Texas. If you're in a different state, let's say you're in Oklahoma or uh, Mississippi or something like that, your standards will be listed out here. It'll have the most current version of your state standards so that you can search for activities that way. Um, so you'll notice as you go down through here um, that it has all of the standards. And I do want you to pay attention to how the standard is formatted. This is important for whichever state you're in, which however your state's um, standards are formatted, Right here, this one has a 1 in parentheses and an A in parentheses to indicate that that's standard 1A. So when you, if you want to search and narrow it down, like let's say you know you want to search for standard 5, you wouldn't just put in 5, you would have to put in 5, like that, with the parentheses around it. So again, that just is by um, whatever, however the standard is formatted. So you can get a quick glance at that. Whatever state you're in, you can look at how the standard is formatted and just copy that. So if you know you want to look for standard five, uh, like this one here, I want to look at the progressive era reforms. So um, I can do it that way. Um, let's say I want to, I know, maybe I don't know the name of the standard, but I know that the word progressive is in it. I can. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Progressive. Wow. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. And so I can find all of the standards with the word progressive in it. And so now I'm going to look at this and it says analyze the impact of the progressive error reforms, including initiative, referendum, recall, and the passage of the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th amendments. So that's the standard that I want to find activities for. And so right down below here, you'll notice that it still has the same order that we saw on the first page. It's all acting history plays right now. But when I select the standard by checking the box there, did you see what happened down below? All of those activities changed. And so now we can see that there are five pages of activities relating to this standard. So that's awesome. But let's say I want to narrow this down even further. Um, I know that 
I'm like, okay, I really want to do something with the 19th Amendment and maybe women's rights or something like that. So right here, I've selected the standard. I wouldn't put women's rights in this box unless it's in a standard that I'm looking for. So this is only this box where I've highlighted the word progressive is only for words that you find in your state's standard itself. If that word does not live in the standard, then nothing will pull up. So I know that I found the correct standard that I want to look for. And now I want to narrow it down to maybe I want to look at suffrage. Uh, let's do women's suffrage. How's that? Women's suffrage. All right, so now I'm going to hit this right here. Now watch what happens below. You'll see there's a bunch of activities here. There were five pages when we did that before I hit the search button. And so now I'm going to hit the search, and it's going to now narrow it down. And we still have some of the similar activities, but it's narrowed it down from five pages of activities to just one page with about 15 or so activities here looking at women's rights in the 19th Amendment and women's suffrage. So that is how you narrow down that search. It's really pretty easy to do. So let's just recap everything here. In this box right here in this area that we're looking at, this is where you search for words and you look for words that are in your standards and you look for your standards. Once you have selected this, the desired standard that you are looking for and you want to narrow it down further, that is when you use the box at the top. The box at the top it can include words that are not in the standard, but just because the word's not in the standard doesn't mean that you're not going to cover it. Obviously, if you're going to cover the 19th Amendment, you're going to be talking about women's suffrage. So that is how you narrow down searches to really get what you want. Now, if you're finding that you're not getting any results, so let's say women's suffrage wasn't, um, wasn't yielding any results, maybe you look for uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Um, so right there, you can pull up things with Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And notice I'm not putting in the full names because sometimes you may have like a spelling difference. I know whenever I did um, a search on Hernando Cortez, you know, some people or some texts refer to Hernando Cortez as Hernan, H-E-R-N-A-N, C-O-R-T-E-S. And then others have Hernando with an O at the end and Cortez with a Z at the end. So you just have to be a little bit strategic in the way you search for that. But finding the standard first off is a great way to narrow that down and make it very easy to follow and find. Awesome. So now I'm going to clear this out. We're going to start all over again. We're going to come back here to this main page. And so I've shown you how to search uh, by keyword, how to search by standard, by your state standard. And I'm going to actually let me uncheck that so we don't have that in there. Go back here. And so I've shown you how to search by keyword, by standards. This next button, I'm not really going to talk about um, during this session at all. And I don't think this is going to be a topic that I cover in this three video series. Um, but we'll talk about that more. You can always go and find out about adding your own content through that question mark up in the top right hand side. Um, activity sets. This is actually something for another video as well. Um, this is when you are kind of organizing folders. So creating folders of lessons that you want to develop later. And that relates to this little file folder on the right hand side. But again, this session is really just focusing on finding activities. So now let's do another quick little search because I did mention that in this video, we're going to look at activity types as well as sorting by Lexile. So let's do another quick search. Let's type in the word sectionalism. Or no, let's do something world history now. Let's do the Greeks. Okay, so I typed in the word Greeks and it gives me a ton of activities relating to the Greeks. Got two pages relating to the Greeks. So um, now that I have that, I'm like, okay, so great. I found some readings on the Greeks um, and obviously I could narrow that down a little bit further, but I just want to find some readings and I've got some kids that are really on a low level. And so I need to find something that they can read. When you click that little Lexile button, it is going to reorder things. And so right here, you will see that it has things all the way down to the 720 Lexile. So like a third grade, second or third grade reading level for that one. 
um, and then it goes up from there all the way up to 1120. So you've got a variety of levels of reading. Um, so that's how you sort. You simply click on the word Lexile. If you wanted to sort by activity type, you could click on the word type, and that's going to give you all of the different activities. So if you wanted to find a mapping one or an atlas question, um, you could select this one here that has a little world symbol. Uh, if you wanted to do a primary source analysis, you could select a little mountain symbol. A mapping activity, it has a little push pin symbol, a PowerPoint, and readings. So there's a lot of different types of activities. There's a simulation with the two people next to each other, and there's a skill-based or brain-based activity, which has the little head with the uh, lightning bolt in it. And then the last one is going to be a video. So that is how you sort for Lexile and you sort for activity type. So it's really pretty simple to do there. Um, you simply click on the word type or you click on the word Lexile and that changes it. And if you want to reverse it and go the other direction, you can do that. And there are several lessons and series in here that may not be Lexiled, and that may be for a different reason. Um, that one, one of those is a video, one of them is an Atlas activity, so it's much more visual based, so there was no need for uh, Lexiling next to that. It's, it's mostly when you get into things with a lot of heavy reading that you have those Lexiles assigned to it. So um, that is really just a, a quick little overview of that. And um, just to show you a little bit more advanced, the last thing I'm going to take you to in this video is going to be the advanced button over here. So when you click on the advanced button, there are also a variety of ways to search here as well. You can set your subject. So if you wanted to look for world history activities, you could do that and hit the little search. It's going to pull up everything related to world history. If you wanted to narrow that down further, look at this. It has all of your different big eras in history. So let's say I wanted to look at global convergence. I can search again, and it's going to narrow down to everything related to global convergence. Um, then I wanted to narrow that down even further. Maybe I want to find a specific series. Oh, see, now we're coming to that spot. Remember at the beginning of the video, and I can pause if you want to go back and you want to rewind and watch the beginning of the video where I talked about the importance of that icon and the grouping of words next to the colon, because that's where these next two things come in. So series title, if you guys remember at the beginning of the video, I said that grouping of words before the colon indicates the collection or the series title. And then the words after the colon indicate the topic. So right here, if I go to series title, let me see all of the series titles that are found in this particular group here. Because in this particular group, I've narrowed it down already to world history and global convergence. So it's going to filter out all of the other things that are not related to those two topics right there. And we can see from this box here that there's quite a few. Now, this is not the full amount because the full amount, you're gonna have like 80 or so of these series title. So this has narrowed it down to about 40 or so. Um, so these different activities, if you wanna narrow it down even further here, you can narrow it down further by series title. And then the next one is going to be by activity type. So um, narrowing it down by the type of activity you wanna look for, that is a great way to start as well. And so now you guys see why it was so important that I said you pay attention to the icon and the grouping of words before the colon. So the icon is over here for activity type and the words before the colon is the series title. And the reason I say that is because you may do like one of these C3 inquiry lessons and really enjoy it. And your kids, you know, you, your kids really connected with it. It was a great lesson and you wanna find more of them. Uh, that's why you remember the series title. I'm gonna do a complete clear out of all of this stuff again, and I'm gonna show you, if I wanna go look by series title, I can just search those over here. And you'll notice there are a lot more now than when we looked in that last session, or that last portion, because I had it narrowed down already. So this one has a lot more of those series titles, over 80 or so of those in there. Um, so right there, I think I've covered a lot of things that you guys need to know. I think the very, very last thing I'm going to cover for you now before going back to the homepage and wrapping this up is the favorites button. So you might notice over here on the right hand side that I have some blue or green stars 
right here next to certain lessons. And that's because I have favorited them. If you ever wanna go back and just look at your favorites, you can click on the advance button and look, there's a little box right here at the bottom of that advance button that says show favorites only. And so now I pulled up just the activities that I have favorited. It's as simple as that. And you clear that out. And again, let's say you don't want to do that. You don't want to necessarily favorite, but you want to create collections or folders. Again, that will be something for another video with those activity sets and this over here. But you can always go up to that question mark button and it walks you through how to create those folders and how to do those different things. All right, so I take you back now to the home screen and I'm just going to finish up by saying thank you for joining me for this session on how to find activities in Active Classroom. To recap, today we looked at how to search by keyword and topic simply by typing it in that bar at the top. We looked at how to search by standard by clicking on the word standards and then putting in our specific state's standards in there and then also how to sort by Lexile and activity type. I hope you guys found this helpful and I hope you guys will be joining me for the next session where we're gonna be focusing on some great series in Active Classroom where I really wanna highlight for different subject areas, some series that are just phenomenal. If you're getting started with Active Classroom, they are great places to start. So again, thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you, we, we hope to see you in the next activity. Have a great day.